today I just want to play with some Colourpop products with you guys and mainly I want to focus on the new pressed pigments that they have. These are the neon ones. Um, I ended up getting all four but I also got a bronzer that I would like to try out and I want to show you some of the blushes that I have because I really like the Colourpop blushes. And I also have some highlighters from them, so I thought we could just kind of do like a, not full face, but you know what I mean, like I'm going to do most of my makeup with Colourpop products, so I think we should just get started. So maybe I'll start with my eyes today, and then we can do the face after I already have foundation and concealer and powder and all that on, obviously, I feel like that's pretty obvious. So I'm going to start off by priming with my MAC Paint Pot and Soft Ochre like I always do, and this is my absolute favorite primer, and I'm very curious to see how these pigments are going to perform. Alright, so let's just swatch these because I want to see how they swatch, if they swatch good at all, so I'm just going to swatch them in this order. So the lime green didn't swatch as good as the orange and the purple and the pink, but you know, we'll see what happens when I put them on the eyes because swatches are not everything. And I assume I don't need to tell you the names of all of these because there's only four of them and they're obviously very different. So if you go on the website and you see a lime green, you know what's going to be the lime green that I have in my palette. So we're just gonna call them by what they are because that's just a lot easier. So I'm obviously going to play with all of these because there's only four of them. So I think my plan is going to be that I want to put the lime green in the inner part of my crease and I'm going to transition that into the orange and put that on the outer part and then on my lower lash line I'll do the pink and the purple. Or maybe I'll do the opposite. I think I'll do the opposite. I think I'll do the pink and the purple on top and then do the lime green and the orange on the bottom lash line. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's start off by taking this pink right here. I do think I have this pink in another palette. I do, I think this is in the Ooh La La palette and it's called Sandbar. I'm pretty sure that's the same shade. And if it is, I already know that I love this. So like I said, I'm gonna be putting that in the first half of my upper crease. Little bit of patchiness. I probably could have used a smaller brush to begin with, but pretty much all of my brushes are dirty because I just have not washed my brushes and I have no excuse other than I'm being <laughs> really lazy. But I'm sure I'm not the only one. I feel like nobody likes to wash their brushes because it just sucks. It's boring. So we're just gonna have to live with some bigger brushes today. And I am packing on quite quite a bit of product here because I don't want this to look patchy at all. But so far this is looking beautiful. It does need a little bit of building up though, but I find that most of Colourpop shadows do, which is not really a problem at all. Alright, next up I'm going to dip into the purple and I'm going to put that on the outer part of my lid. Now this is a new shadow that I have not tried before, so let's see how this goes. I'm going to keep this shape pretty round because I do have a plan for what I want to do next. And so far the shadow is laying down very nicely. I'm also going to blend it into the pink. I don't know if I would necessarily say that this is a neon purple though. I mean it's not really that vibrant. It looks like basically every other purple that I have in my collection. So I can't really say that there's anything super special about this. That's not to say that it's a bad shadow or anything. I just don't really think that you need this, you know what I mean? I feel like the orange and the lime green is definitely going to be more unique to people's collection than this purple right here, but it does seem like it performs beautifully though, so you know, if you're looking for a good purple, maybe this does have a place in your collection because this is working really nicely. So far I'm very impressed by the formula of this purple. I mean, this is beautiful. That worked really well. So next I'm gonna dip into, and I just want you to see the amount of kick up that I have in these. I'm not sure how well you're able to see this, but they're pretty powdery. So I'm gonna next go into the lime green now, and I'm gonna put that on the first half of my lower lash line. Now I'm curious to see how this is going to stick to my eyes since I don't have any eyeshadow primer down there. And usually these kind of shades really need something tacky, so if this doesn't work well, I might have to go in and put a little bit of eyeshadow primer down there. But let's find out. So it's not super vibrant and pigmented, and I don't know what will happen if I go in with a bigger brush and I try to blend this. So let's just kind of see if this buffs away or not. 
yeah, I mean, that is not performing very good. So I am going to take a bit more of my paint pot and I'm just going to put that right where I want it. And I think I'm going to pull it all the way across just to make sure that the orange has something tacky to hang on to as well. All right, so let's try this again and see if this works any better. And if you have a white eyeshadow primer, this would probably work even better. But personally, I don't really like to work on a white base, but I mean, that's just me. And I know that if I did that, the shadows would show up more. I'm not super impressed by this lime green right here. It's not doing exactly what I want it to. I do think this is the kind of shadow that's just going to perform better on top of a cut crease or something like that on its own. It's not the best. It is showing up, but it's it's just not as vibrant as I would have liked for it to be. So I'm next going to take the orange and I'm going to put that on the outer part of my lower lash line here. And as you can see already, like that is so much more pigmented and opaque. And so I guess the swatches were pretty accurate this time around. Just going to take a fluffier brush now and I'm going to just blend out the edges here. And also just mix that into the purple on top so that they kind of connect. And so what I want to do next, just for fun, is I'm going to take this ColourPop Deli Mud Shadow and I have the Into Focus one, which is the green. And I'm going to use this to sketch out a giant wing that's going to go all over my lid. And so I'm just going to do that and I'm going to have you guys watch because it's really hard to explain what I'm doing. So I'm just going to have you guys kind of watch while I'm doing it. And I'm first going to start by taking a small brush and just draw the triangle of the wing. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of my lid after. And I haven't used this jelly much shadow enough to know if this is going to work, but fingers crossed because otherwise it's going to look crazy. Okay, so honestly, I'm not having the best of luck with this and it's not really doing what I wanted to do. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to continue with this plan and I don't know what to do without it. So I'm gonna keep trying for a bit longer and I might have to give up and just go in with something else over the top of this. Yeah, this is unfortunately not doing what I would like for it to do, so let me come up with a plan B. Hopefully I have one. Alright, so what I'm gonna try to do instead is I'm gonna use this Stila Glitter- wait, this is not a glitter. This is the Shimmer and Glow in Freedom, which is just a light blue. And I'm basically going to do the same thing with this that I was planning to do with the ColourPop Shadow. So hopefully this is going to be opaque enough that I'll be able to cover up the shadows here, but I think I should be able to. going very well so I apologize if this look doesn't come out looking as good as it could because so far I am on the struggle bus so I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut my crease just because I don't know if this is really going to cover up all of that shadow that I have in my crease so I wasn't planning on doing this but I am going to cut my crease first and then I'm gonna go ahead and set where I cut with a nude colored eyeshadow and then on top of that I'm gonna go in with more of the steely glitter and hopefully be able to build this up to be super opaque but we will see and I will come back when I've hopefully figured this out. Alright, so I do think this is looking a little bit better right now, but I am going to probably ruin this by doing the next step, so... <laughs> what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take my liquid liner, which is just a black, and I'm going to outline just the outer part of my wing here. I'm not going to bring it through my crease or anything, I just want like a triangle, kind of just to outline where the wing is to make it look a bit sharper, so... Let me just hold my breath for three minutes while I do this and then again I will just fast forward and let you guys watch and hopefully I won't mess this up because I think this might come out looking kind of cool if I'm able to figure out a way to do this. So let me just, let me try this. So 
So it's not at all even, but what I'm gonna do next is I think I'm going to just line my upper lash line here. And I think this look is going to come up looking absolutely ridiculous, but that's okay because sometimes you just gotta sit down and try something else and have some fun. And I'm also going to connect this to where I outline my wing. I think I'm going to make this line right here a bit thicker as well. This is so hard to do when you have hooded eyes and just getting everything to look right down in the corner is always so hard. So I think I might stop the craziness here because otherwise it's just going to get way out of hand. Not that it's not out of hand already, but you know what, we're just going to keep it to this and I'm going to finish up the rest of my eyes, put on some liner mascara, then I'll be right back and we can continue with the face. So if you were only here to figure out how the pigments are, I think they're okay. I think that the lime green could be better. The rest of them seem to perform beautifully. So if you want to see the rest of my face, I will be right back and we can do that. All right, so the eyes are done. It's looking a little bit better. It's by far not the best look that I've ever done, but you know what that happens? I'm not going to refilm this because the look didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. I think it's important to show that not everyone has great makeup days every single day and that goes for me as well. So let's move on. I want to try out the new bronzer that I got from ColourPop and I got mine in the shade Afternoon Delight and it looks like this and this is not the one that I originally wanted. I wanted, I don't remember which one I wanted, but the one I wanted was sold out so I wasn't able to get that one. So we're just gonna try this. I feel like it might work okay. It might be a little bit too light for me, but let's just start applying this and see what happens. So this actually works quite well. I feel like it's pigmented enough without being too pigmented and it also builds up nicely. It's also more on the cool tone side, which I really like in bronzers. So I think this looks pretty good actually. I gotta say, I'm always so impressed by every ColourPop powder product. I feel like they just work really nicely for me, which is great because they are so affordable. Oh, and if you were wondering what's in my waterline, I used the LA Girl Neon Pencil in... Gotcha? <laughs> that was a great name for it. I wanna say that the green is not my favorite. Um, I think I like the yellow and the turquoise one more, like formula-wise, I had a bit of a harder time getting this into my waterline, so I don't know if it's a different formula or something like that, but I definitely thought that the other ones were easier to apply, but I mean, it's still there. You can obviously see it. It just took a bit more time to get in there. So I actually really like this bronzer. I think that looks really nice. So let me go grab one of my ColourPop blushes because I do have two of them. Alright, so these are the two blushes that I have, and I think today I'm going to go for this one, which is Main Chick. And I really like the formula on this. I find it to be nice and pigmented without being too pigmented. And it also blends out really easily, and I find the lasting power to be really good on these. So I am super happy that I ended up picking up some of Colourpop's blushes. Um, I do kind of want to get one of their more cool tone blushes, but since I didn't have that today, this is just what we're working with. I think ideally I would have liked to have more of a cool tone blush today, but this is totally fine too, and I think that this looks really nice. And then for blush, I want to use my uh, Super Shock Cheek in Pinch Me. This is like a duochrome kind of peachy pink, and I think this is so beautiful. But I did get a question the other day on how I apply these, because I hate applying anything with my fingers, so I never use my fingers. And normally I use my, I'm sorry if I'm looking down, I'm trying to find my brush. So normally I would use this, which is the Sigma F03. This is kind of a dense brush, and I like this for picking up this, but if you don't have this, you can easily use an eyeshadow brush. Anything that's kind of uh, tapered, or no, not tapered, like the other way around that's pinched, I guess I would say. Uh, you have to really like dig your brush into it though and make sure that there's like <laughs> brush strokes left in here and that you have a lot of product on your brush. And then what you do is you just kind of tap it on where you want it first to make sure that it deposits the shadow, or the highlighter, I should say. And then you can go in and kind of blend on the other side of the brush to really buff it into your skin. And you can see it picked up a lot of uh, highlighter when you really dig your brush into it. But it's nice to have something that's kind of dense to blend it out with as well. It doesn't work to just use a very fluffy highlighter brush that just does not really cut it. 
I'm also just going to go back in with my blush brush and make sure that there is no harsh line between the blush and the highlighter. So I like to kind of layer the blush on top of the highlighter again after I'm done to make sure it's looking nice and seamless. I feel like I overuse the word seamless so much, but it's just such a good word to explain what it is you're trying to say, you know? So I think next up what I'm going to do, I also bought some new lip liners from Colourpop because I absolutely love their lip liners. And this is called Little One. So I'm going to put on this and then I haven't really decided if I want to use a gloss or a lipstick, but I do know that I want to use this lip liner. So I'm going to put on the lip liner and then I'm going to figure out what else I want to put on top of this and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this lip liner couldn't be further from being brown because I feel like the tube of this or the cap of this is a lot darker than it is on my mouth. So I don't know what the deal with that is. And that's kind of a shame because I wanted something that was a bit darker, like, you know, this shade. But I guess what I'll do is I'm just going to put a gloss on top of this. And I don't know how this is going to look, but this is Fantasia, also by Colourpop. So... Well, let me try to put this on. I feel like this might be a little bit too brown for the lip liner, but I mean, it's a gloss, so... Alright, so I think this is just gonna have to do. I don't feel like changing anything right now, to be honest. So, um, just to sum up, I think that the pigments... I guess I already did sum this up. Uh, but to sum up again, I think that the pigments are good. I do think that the lime green could need a little bit of work. Again, it's my first impression, so... You know, take that with a grain of salt and this might actually perform a lot better if you put it in your crease or you put it on top of a cut crease or something like that. But I thought all of the other shadows performed beautifully, so if you've been thinking about picking up any of them, I would highly suggest picking up the orange or the pink or the purple. Obviously, you could pick up the lime green if you wanted to, but I don't think that I would necessarily recommend it. I don't think it's great. I feel like there are probably better lime greens out there. Not that I found one, and if I did, I would recommend it to you, but I have not. So if you're really looking for a lime green shadow, maybe you should pick it up still, because there just aren't that many on the market. So I guess that is going to sum up this video. Let me know what you think. Did you pick up any of these? I am personally eyeing the eyeliner set that's coming out today. I think it's releasing the day that I'm filming this. They're coming out with a 20-pack of all of their eyeliners, and I love their eyeliners, and I'm so tempted to pick it up, but... I really don't need it so cross your fingers for me that I don't end up buying that because I feel like I definitely might so yeah let me know what you think of this look I know it's a bit I have no words but yeah that's going to sum up today's video thank you so much for watching as always if you are new to my channel I would love it if you would consider subscribing and becoming part of my family and hopefully I will see you all in my next video bye